welcome to Garden Talks or welcome back. I'm so excited to be here because I finally feel like I've settled into my new place and so that has allowed me to create the space to be able to create and share all this valuable information with you all. Super excited. Today I'm here in my sunroom. This is where I'm going to be filming a lot of my content so thank you so much for tuning in i recently adopted two kittens and they have so much energy so you might see them in my videos but anyways let's get into it recently i've been getting into so many books Ooh. okay so today we're going to be getting into this book it's called an herbalist guide to formulary it's honestly such an amazing book and so I just want to read some pages and share some more insight about it and whatnot so yeah read along with me so basically this book here it's content it contains different parts to it so like the first part it's going to share a, a formulary it's how to craft formulas in herbal medicine. And then part two is core body systems, digestion, cardiovascular, respiratory. And then part three is the brain. So the brain and the nervous system, memory and cognitive thought. And this part, part three is actually what we're going to be getting into today because I find that it's the most interesting to me. So that's where I wanna get started. And then part four, immune system, skin, and first aid. Um, this is about the immune system, inflammation and pain, the skin, wound, and first aid. And the thing is, what I love about this book is that every part, it's going to share herbs or herbal blends that you can make so that you can consume or use for your body so that you... It, can help you heal naturally. So then part five, uh, hormones and the endocrine system. So this is herbal medicine for teenage women, herbal medicine for midlife women, pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum care, menopause, the endocrine system, herbal healing for men, the urinary system, um, and then we have the glossary. But yeah, this, it gets pretty deep. So like I said, today we're going to be getting into the brain, the brain and the nervous system and memory and cognitive thought. All right, so the brain and nervous system. The nervous system is a complex and fascinating frontier. One of the final frontiers of human discovery and doubtless a mystery that may never be completely solved. For our purposes here, the central nervous system will be comprised of the brain and the brain stem, and the peripheral nervous system is the complex of nerves that allow us to sense what is in the world around us and to respond to these sensory observations with psychological and behavioral responses. Altogether, the nervous system allows us to think, reason, create, remember, and even to keep us safe since the hormones and glands associated with quick action under threat are directed by the nervous system. The largest and heaviest part of the brain is the cerebrum, the wrinkly gray matter that is the bulk of the brain. Commonly removed by Egyptian mummifiers as extraneous matter, the brain is now understood to be the grand central station for thought. The cerebrum in particular controls voluntary muscle movement as well as reasoning and deductive skills. Below the cerebrum lies the cerebellum, a smaller organ that controls body balance and the interplay between sensory organs and muscular activity. Beneath the cerebellum lies the brain stem that connects the brain to the spinal cord. The brain stem controls involuntary movements such as lung contraction and breath, heart muscle contraction, internal muscle contraction, 
of the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine, and other so-called reptilian activities that must be achieved without our consciously thinking about them. So one thing is like we have to remember how powerful plants are and how powerful they are in helping us heal our body. And like this is saying, like our nervous system plays such a huge role in controlling our body, our life. Our brains have about 100 billion nerve cells or neurons and more than a thousand trillion connections between them. It's an incredibly complex and miraculous system that enables humans to send thought signals to affect actual movement and action. A neuron is part of a long chain of neurons. Each is separated by a synaptic cleft, the tiny space between neurons, the yard between houses. This space is where much of the action happens especially the action that can be affected by drugs and herbal medicines. At the very end of each resynaptic neuron sit little pouches full of neuron tr neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers that stimulate the process of electrical transmission of information. Think of these as the kids in each house who want to go play in the yard. Their game is that they bunch up by the door waiting for a special signal. When they get the signal, many of them run out the door and into the yard. The goal is to get to the other side, to the front door of the next house, and send the signal along to the kids that are waiting at the next house. There are many types of neurotransmitters that wait at the resynapse, including amino acids, peptides, and monoamines. Mono means. Mono means are responsible for attention, cognition, and emotion, and they include acetylcholine, serotonin, dopamine, noradrenaline, histamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. When an electrical signal comes down the axon, sending arm of the neuron, its action potential stimulates the release of a particular neurotransmitter from its pouch. The neurotransmitter, say the monoamine serotonin, expels from the pouch into the synaptic cleft. It then does one of several things. It stays in the cleft, waiting. It returns to the pouch in the presynaptic neuron. It gets eaten by an enzyme monoamine oxidase, or it succeeds in traveling across the cleft to the next neuron. Here, it will either attach to a receptor and trigger an electrical impulse, or it will reach its final destination, such as a muscle, and trigger a muscle contraction. The synaptic cleft is a place where herbs have a great potential for making a difference. One way they do this is by being a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Monoamine oxidase inhibitor. If the neurotransmitters are the kids playing from one house to the next, the monoamine oxidase is the kidnapper that snatches them out of the yard. MAO, which stands for monoamine oxidase, is the enzyme that breaks down neurotransmitters, taking them out of action and keeping them from reaching the next neuron. The signals for happiness, joy, peace, serenity, muscle control, etc. stop. MAO breaks down serotonin, melatonin, epinephrine, and dopamine. And this book gets into all these scientific terms. I don't know how to pronounce all of them, but you know, you get the point. It's like there's all these neurotransmitters in which herbs then have um, the opportunity to impact your body. So serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Another chemical that can stop the game of the neurotransmitters is that one that reuptakes the neurotransmitter back into the neuron. If the monoamine is the kid running from one house to their yard to the next house, imagine the chemical as the grandma who yells, child, get back in the house. The child reluctantly obeys, returning to the house. 
The monoamine is reuptaken into the neuron. This stops the progression of the electrical impulse moving across the synapse to the next neuron. The common result, depression. So this is interesting. But if you put a lock on the door, so to speak, the monoamine cannot return. This allows the neurotransmitter to stay in the synapse longer to fulfill its role and continue the electrical impulse. Herbs and drugs that put the lock on are called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, SSRI, because they inhibit the monoamine from returning. These likely include St. John's wort and licorice, though research on St. John's wort is contradictory. Myelin sheath protectors. Finally, some herbs help support the production of the myelin sheath, which is a fatty tissue that surrounds a neuron's axon, promoting the transmission of the electrical information. The myelin sheath insulates the axon in intervals, keeping the sodium and potassium from leaking out of the axon and allowing the action potential to jump from one node of Ranvier to the next, increasing the rate of transmission. In other words, the better the myelin sheath, the faster the signals move from the brain to the body. A lack of myelin sheath is the basis of multiple sclerosis, a disease in which the body's own immune system actually attacks and dismantles the sheath around the neuron in the central nervous system. My kitties are fighting, causing scar tissue to develop and disrupting muscle control, vision, speech, and voluntary movement. Am amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also called Lou Gehrig's disease, occurs when the nerve cells die completely, causing an atrophy of the muscles. Certain herbs are being researched for their potential role in protecting the myelin sheath and easing symptoms associated with MS and ALS. Cinnamate, a compound found in cinnamon, storax, and shea butter appears to block lactic transport, which can ease muscle fatigue for symptomatic relief. More directly, turmeric may be of assistance in protecting the myelin sheath. In 2002, the Journal of Immunology reported the ability of curcumin, the so-called active ingredient in turmeric root, to substantially reduce the inflammatory demyelination response in mice afflicted with EAE, the mouse version of multiple sclerosis. More recently, curcumin is the focus of researchers at a university who recognize the plant's ability to destroy the beta amyloid plaques of Alzheimer's disease, but who have been stimmed by curcumin's inability to cross the blood-brain barrier. To overcome this obstacle, the university and Japanese researchers developed a curcumin analog that can be made into an aerosol and inhaled, bypassing the blood-brain barrier. Their studies in mice suggest that aerosol applications might be helpful for humans suffering with either Alzheimer's MS and related diseases of myelin sheath de degeneration. Whew. All right, well, the point is, the point is that turmeric, because of its active, um, you know, ingredient of what it's composed of, curcumin, however the fuck you say it, <laughs> that it's such a potent herb, like, I take the ginger turmeric shots every day. Like I posted a recipe of how to make these at home so you could save money and you should definitely do it. And also it has cayenne pepper in there and you already know that that is super amazing to take every day as well. So let's keep reading. We're gonna get into the herbs here in a second, but all of that is basically just allowing us to understand our nervous system a little more and how a lot of those major like diseases, sicknesses that people suffer from um, has to do with this. 
Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Drop a comment below if you enjoyed listening to this or watching this on my YouTube. And let me know if you enjoyed reading along with me and learning with me because I myself, I am learning, but I am also here to share this information with you and to help open up your mind on the fact that herbs and plants in general are so healing to our body. That's why they have been given to us, right? And if you are interested in more videos like this, please make sure to like, share, subscribe. I like to share videos on healing plants, specifically herbs and magic mushroom, which fall under fungi. Um, but yeah, I love to share videos on that. So thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're feeling amazing.